Yes, all right, I'm Batjack JW, and uh, thanks for watching this video, thanks for clicking on it. So what are we talking about today? John Wayne's six gun, my favorite six gun. I'm a big fan of John Wayne, always have been. Uh, at, and really at age seven, my dad uh, was basically always watching it, uh, saying, hey, let's watch this. Uh, so really right away, I was already watching, you know, Real, Real Lobo, uh, El Dorado, some of my favorite ones. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about is John Wayne's signature stuff, uh, in a sense, his uh, six gun. His six gun was so iconic, uh, and uh, we're talking about when, uh, from when I noticed it was pretty much from the Sons of Katie Elder and then on, he pretty much had a distinctive six gun. And you know what, some of you know what I'm talking about. Well, that's uh, kind of why we have so much of this uh, yellow type of stuff out here. <laughs> um, the yellow stocks on his gun were uh, simulated uh, aged ivory. Okay. Now the story is that his were Catalan, a uh, form of Bakelite plastic that he actually tea stained himself that he liked so much. And that was it. That was his gun that was seen in so many of his westerns. Uh, we're talking Sons of Katie Elder, El Dorado, um, Rooster Cogburn, True Grit, The Train Robbers, K. Hell, United States Marshal, Big Jake, I, the list goes on. I mean, it was seen in so much of his films. Um, it really made me want to have one. Uh, so um, here I was one day flipping through a magazine, and it was the American Rifleman magazine sent to me by the NRA. I saw and laid my eyes on a picture of what they called the Rooster Shooter, which was Cimarron's... Um, homage, rendition, what what have you, of the Duke's gun. So it, it originally had these yellow grips on it and everything. It had an antique finish. Um, I went ahead and called up my uh, my friend that's a, a, a firearms dealer. I said, get me this gun without hesitation, and I got it. Now, you could say it's a blessing in disguise or whatnot. Got the gun um, and got the beautiful uh, grips on it and they broke. I dropped it and it broke. <laughs> oh, um, talk about the stupidest thing I've ever done, but that had turned out to be a blessing in disguise because that made me venture off into making my own. I have uh, been making and designing my own aged ivory style stock grips on these uh, uh, six guns, uh, John Wayne style six guns uh, for about four years now. So, all right, that is kind of it. It really is, uh, that's, you can take any of the six guns. Uh, now, usually it's a, the four and three quarter inch barrel. This, these are both uh, Cimarron's in 45 Colt. And uh, you put the uh, AG yellow grips on there, it becomes the John Wayne gun. So I got a couple other props out here that I got. They got the uh, Red River um, belt buckle that he notoriously wears a lot. Um, I got his uh, holster rig, the suede lined, uh, the, the suede belt and um, the, the thick holster with the nice little band going around the side. Now this is another Cimarron. Um, this is the Frontier model. So I just kind of brought that out to show you that uh, if you did not want to splurge and spend the, I think they're like $800, seven, seven to $800 on the Rooster Shooter, you can buy their, uh, like their even cheaper model, um, Frontier model, the new Frontier. And it's not, it's a great gun. It's, it's perfect, I like it. Uh, I like these because they're really, they're accurate. They're accurate to what the way it was. You got the hammer mounted firing pin. You load five shots instead of six on these. Uh, the way they incorporated the safety was really good because it, the safety is part of the notch. Now you can go ahead and actually, let me uh, half cock this. And the base pin, if you push it all the way in, okay, there's two notches on there. If you push it all the way in, that actually stops the hammer from going all the way forward and having the firing pin protrude out. So that's their, their safety. It's really uh, slick. It's, it's kind of uh, hidden, so it's not a big switch on the gun or something like that. So that's, I, I, again, I like it. Uh, they have the color case hardening. Even the roll marks are really cool. Yeah, it says uh, Frontier 45 Colt. These are both in 45 Long Colt. And then it's got the little patent dates right here. So And they don't, uh, you know, Colts are nice, but... 
Colts have gotten really expensive, and I like to take these things out to the range and, uh, you know, wear them around my friend's farm and what have you, you know, truck it around in the, my holster rig, so if it gets a scratch or two on it, you know, I'm not too worried about it. So, all right. Now, for those of you at home, if you got your, uh, you can always buy grips like this. These are like, um, you know, Hogue or NC Ordnance or whoever uh, you can find them. They're a type of polymer ivory, they call them. You can stain them yourself. Uh, you can uh, use some leather dye. This is what I've used in the beginning, which is Phoebe's, Phoebing's uh, leather dye. And uh, you can come out with a set that kind of looks like this. So a little quick uh, little thing. Now, one thing I started to do, which I liked, which was adding a type of character in it. Um, you can really go crazy with the aging. I got a, a set right here, which are really aged out. And I got the finger grooves on there. Now I'm left-handed, so that was a, a struggle for me. So uh, John Wayne's gun had finger grooves in it. I put the finger grooves on the right side of the panel for mine here. Uh, these do not have finger grooves on them. Um, I made a few with finger grooves, but uh, sometimes I just don't. Here's one with the, the finger grooves on there. So I got uh, another set here. These are a little bit more like bone with uh, aging going through it, which is unique to each each grip and each panel. So, also got uh, a little bit more kind of the darker age grips. And then the lighter colored stuff, which I like. I like these ones here. They, they have a really uh, a miscellaneous kind of aging through it, just real random. And then it's got some superficial uh, stress cracks going through it. Uh, just your plain type of age yellow ones that he had. So that's just kind of me, and I, I install mine as a one-piece grip, meaning that they put the block, the spacer in between, and I glue it together. Instead of doing it where you put the uh, screw and the escutcheons, and that requires drilling and uh, countersinking the uh, little grommets or the escutcheons, basically, uh, you got to buy. And they're kind of expensive, but I found that it's easier, and uh, a lot. it makes it more clean-looking to just add the uh, the spacer in between and I use JB Weld to attach them. That requires to removing the uh, back strap of the uh, gun off. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of have this stuff out. Um, my leather rig here, my belt here is made by uh, Hunter Leather Company. They're out of Westminster, Colorado. I used to live uh, in Longmont, so I was happy to support them and buy it. I'm gonna definitely buy another one because they make a really good uh, a copy of it. And the uh, holster I got here, this is a Galco. Uh, Hunter Leather makes their own. I need to buy one of theirs. I want to, uh, but I've, this is the first uh, John Wayne real holster I bought, and it's been working great. I like it. Nice thick leather, and it's it's hold, held up really nice. So yeah, uh, that's just kind of just want to toss it out there. I'm a big John Wayne fan, and uh, that's some of the grips I've made, and that's just kind of his iconic piece. Uh, you know, even uh, uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, in um, the War Wagon where he goes up and uh, he goes to get his gun back from one of the guys and he says, nope, that's my gun. And uh, he says the infamous line, he says, um, the, the gun is mine, the shells in there belong to him. And you can tell him he can come get them anytime. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Like, share, and subscribe.